Hi guys, um, in this group of tutorials what we're going to be doing is um, covering from start to finish the process of um, creating um, a barrel asset for a game in Unreal. Um, we're going to start off by modelling and then we're going to cover unwrapping it, um, texturing the UV in Photoshop and then in the end putting it into the engine. Um, but this video is going to be focusing on the modelling. So first things first, you need to have a reference image. I've just found this one on Google. But um, you guys might be working from, when you're modelling your own, from uh, concept art, which is fine. Uh, but this is just a quick video, so this is one I've found on Google here. Um, so we're going to be working from that image. I'm just going to move it over so I can see it. Um, but yeah, so... Obviously, the first thing we want to do is create a cylinder down here. I had a little play around with this before I started recording. I decided that 14 sides was the basis of what we wanted. So if you set the cylinder to 14 sides before you create it, or alternatively, you could just do it afterwards, like take it up and down here. But I thought 14 was quite nice. So yeah, um, I decided I wanted the height to be 40, the radius to be about 15. Uh, we're going to alter this later on, but this will basically just be uh, around about good size. Um, you will be able to rescale this in uh, Unreal Engine or, you know, Unity, whatever. But uh, this is just the, the way that I like to model it, about 40 by 15. Um, so yeah, so when you've got it um, at 14 sides and then the right kind of shape and size you want, you want to change it to an editable poly. And then we're going to grab this top polygon and the bottom one here we're going to inset it um because we're just creating that kind of ridge from the wooden planks that are making it up or the wooden like uh i don't know pieces i guess um so we just set it into about there it's going to be quite thick this one just because it's also going to have like a metal ridge on as well so i don't want the wood to look too thin so i'm going to set it about i don't know 1.5 I could type in, but just do it by eye, you don't have to do it as precisely as I'm doing it. And then tick off it. And then we're going to make, uh, the, 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 we're just going to extrude it, but inwards. So you can use this little uh, roller here and just take it down, so you're just creating like a small little gap there. So it's just nicely inset. Right, uh, next what we're going to do is if we go on the edge, we just need to start creating those little metal kind of uh, I don't really know what they're called, but the metal kind of like things that keep the, the planks together. Um, edging, I don't know. I'm not a barrel expert, but we're going to grab this first. Right, if this is the middle here, we'll grab this edge here. And all we're going to do is just chamfer it, basically. Um, so if you just click on the settings part, that'll set those that one edge and split it into two. So it does that nice and easily for you. Uh, one thing I've forgotten to do is grab the bottom one as well. So if we just do that, if you hold control and double click, it'll grab that one and then hold control and grab the other one. And then you can do them both at the same time. So then we just grab, do the chamfer again. Just press tick. And then this time what we'll do is we'll grab this polygon. And we're just gonna basically, we can actually do it from the side view here. That might be easier, or the front view. If we just kind of select just those bits there, and then hold control, and again, make a small box, and just select those bits there, so we've got them all. Make sure you've not selected any random polygons that you don't want to. And then we're just gonna extrude this part again. Here we go, Ooh. Make sure this is set to zero. And then we'll just press tick. And it looks like it hasn't done anything yet, but um, I guarantee it has. So if you do it by group, you can see it kind of is just moving it around. But what we want it to be doing is we want to kind of scale it up and woo, scale it up and down. So if you just press the tick, basically, like I said, it looks like it hasn't done anything. But then if you uh, scale it, you can see that it's created separate polygons and you can just boost those out a small amount like that. Because we're just basically making that, that metal bit that goes around the edge. So we're just going to do it a small amount about there. Now what we need to do is make the 
barrel kind of like rounder so it doesn't kind of look like a I don't know an oil drum or whatever it looks like at the moment so again in the front view uh, or the left view it's up to you you're just going to grab um, if we go onto vertex and you want to grab the box but without grabbing that bottom bit there so just these middle few and then all we're going to do is just scale it up like that just a small amount and then you're going to grab these middle ones here and scale those up a little bit just until you've got the kind of shape you want but that seems about right for us yep right so now if you look at this polygon here we've got a bit of an issue because it's got ooh, what 14 sides and it needs to have a maximum four uh three is fine if you're doing uh you know like a sphere or something but for this we'll just chop it up into four so the way you go about that is you can just go in vertex again, grab one from the edge here. Oh, before I carry on, one thing you might not have done, I always set my um, my viewports up into edged faces down here. If I turn that off, you'll see it's a lot more difficult to work with. So if you just go onto the default shading part here and click edged faces, you'll have a lot easier of a time. But yeah, so grab one from this side and then you're just going to spin it around and grab the opposing one from over there and then just click connect here. And that just puts a nice edge in between those. And then we're going to do the same thing from these two edges here. Connect. And then these two here. Connect. We've done a nice even number on the, um, the sides. So you won't need to do this last one. Sometimes you have to do that into three. But this one's got one, two, three, four. So that's perfect. We'll just do the other side here as well. And you'll also need to do the bottom, uh, the bottom of the barrel too. And I'll just do that real quick. I'll just flip it over. You guys might want to, um, you know, make a different kind of barrel. That's completely fine. The reason I've just chosen to do this one is for the purpose of showing you how to unwrap later on and get it into engine. So. You can follow this tutorial, but you don't necessarily have to model it the same way. Um, so you could, you know, you could do the same thing, but be modeling an oil drum, but you'll be able to unwrap it the same way I'm unwrapping it. But there, there we go. So I think that's all of that connected and fine. One thing I do want to um, probably add actually is the barrel let me just drag this back over. The barrel that I'm working from, it's got this kind of little, um, I guess it's like a, a cork part, because this barrel I assume will be used for, I don't know, wine or beer or something. Um, but I'm not going to put that bit in. What I am going to do is I'm going to create this kind of lip part up here, um, because I put these two in like uh, in the middle-ish, but I'm just going to create those two at the top and bottom. So I think they look nice. So let me just go back over here. I probably should have done this before I uh, did the edges, but this is a good opportunity to show you how you can kind of alter your, um, you know, your model as you're working, because you'll find this as you're working through things. You'll probably go, oh gosh, I wish I'd have done that first, but it's pretty simple to change. So just grab the control ring again. And then this time what we're going to do, there we go, is just connect. There you go. And that's added in, um, if you leave them all set to zero, that's just added in an edge and it's not changed the geometry at all. So just tick that. And then we'll select these two new edges and then we're gonna do the exact same process we did for these, uh, this bottom and top kind of edge, like metal bit, but we're gonna do them a little bit thinner, like the reference image. So we'll just chamfer that. Ooh, maybe not as much as the last one. So I'm just gonna drag that down Ooh, about there. Actually, no, I'll do it the exact same way. You kind of just have to change your mind as you go along. We'll do that again. So yeah, just set that to that. Um, one thing I'm going to do at this point is I might move them up and down a little bit uh, just because from my reference image, they're not that far away from the top of the lip here. So I'm just gonna press Control Z. And before I do the chamfering, I'm just gonna take this edge and click move tool, move it up a little bit closer. In fact, I'm gonna go all the way back before they existed because I don't want to change the geometry. There we go. So connect, and then this 
Oh, not that one, not that one. A bit of trial and error in here. This one here should be it, yeah. So I'm moving that top one up to the top, but as you can see, it's moving the bottom one, which is pretty annoying. Um, but you should be able to just pinch that one back down. I might just have to do that bottom one again. I probably will, yeah. So if you ever want to get rid of an edge, don't just select all of it and press delete, because I'll show you now why you shouldn't do that. If I just press delete now, <laughs> or if I just press backspace even, but then it looks like I've deleted the entire edge. But if you go on verts, you can see here, there's still some little vertices kind of hiding. So if we go back and I select the whole edge, if you press control and then backspace to delete it, it'll get rid of the verts as well, which is what you want. Cool. So I'm just going to ring that again. Press connect. But then this time I'm going to move it up like kind of down near the bottom similar to the one at the top but there you go it doesn't need to be exact um just needs to be visually the same right so what we can do now is we can go back and grab all these and if you want to do it ooh, slightly quicker quicker way you could drag the top but then you'd have to go in and deselect all this middle part so Unfortunately, I think the fastest way to do this is just to kind of press control and click around and do that. So I'll just try and do that as quickly as I can. If you're doing a very complicated model, in theory, you could uh, just do this to one top half and then mirror it and kind of, instead of modeling the bottom half as you go, you could just create like, a seam down the middle and then just do all your details to the top half and then mirror it below. But for the sake of it being kind of like a beginner's tutorial, I'm not going to go into that. But yeah, I'm going to grab these bottom ones too. If you want to hide the grid, you just press G. Because sometimes when you're working with something from the bottom, it can be quite annoying. It's just kind of hanging out there. So just turn this back around. And then I'm just going to extrude this guy, Ooh. press tick, and then go back onto uniform scale and just pinch that out a little tiny bit, like not as much as the other one, just a little bit like that. And then in order to create the kind of uh, the top bit of the barrel again, because um, on the image, I'll just drag it back over again, you can see this bit here, there is a bit of a bit where the wood's showing through, so I'm just going to create that now. And I'll do that by just grabbing these ones here. Individually, whoop, control Z. And I'm just gonna extrude those up a little bit. Obviously there's loads of different ways you can go around uh, modeling. Like everyone will model in a different way. Um, there aren't necessarily wrong, well, there are wrong ways to model. Um, as long as the, all the geometries correct in the end and you've not got like seven sided polygons and stuff like that if you whatever way you go about doing this it's probably probably okay as long as it all fits so we'll just extrude those now again this time i'm going to use this scroller here because i'm doing them both at the top and the bottom so i'm just going to do it up a little bit like that press tick and then uniform scale it in a little tiny bit and then that's that cool Right, so that's all I'm going to do for the model. It's going to be quite low poly. Um, in the next video, we're going to go on to texturing it. Uh, sorry, we're going to go on to unwrapping it. And then after that video, we'll go on to texturing it. Um, the unwrapping video is probably going to be quite a bit longer than this one, just because I understand it's probably the first time you guys have unwrapped something before um, in this way. So we'll just go through it. Um, and we'll just get through that together and I'll show you how to set up a like a, a, an optimized UV uh, UV map as well. And yeah, so that's what we'll be doing in the next video. Uh, cool. All right, cheers.